Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again here in my home office. In this video, we are going to take a look at calculating box sizes using 12-3034 in the 2018 version of the Canadian Electrical Code. In previous videos, we took a look at sizing pull boxes and larger junction boxes based off 123036. In this one, we're going to take a look at what counts as far as conductors and box fill so that we can eventually size the proper size boxes as required by Table 23, again in 2018 Canadian Electrical Code. Well, let's get right to it. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is what actually counts towards box fill as far as conductors. Obviously the conductors themselves, but there's all the additional stuff that gets stuffed inside those junction boxes that we need to take into consideration as well. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is wire connectors or wire nuts, better known as morets. So wire nuts or wire morets are counted in pairs. Okay, So when we have one individual wire nut, it actually doesn't count as anything towards that box fill. As soon as we have a pair of them though, that now counts as one wire. If we look at three individual wire nuts, well we still only have one true pair, that extra wire nut doesn't count towards box fill again. So this still counts as just one wire. If we look at four, now we have two individual pairs, this would now count as two conductors towards box fill. If we had five wire nuts, you can kind of see the pattern that's happening here, but I still only have two full pairs of wire nuts, so that still only counts as two wires towards box fill. The next thing we move on to is the actual devices that can be located in the boxes. So for example, a switch. Well, a switch counts as two conductors in box fill. It actually says to deduct the total of two conductors from the table 23 values, but I find it a lot easier to just go in and say, well, how many conductors do we have total, including all of our devices, things like that, and then just go buy a box based off table 23. So that switch counts as two conductors. A receptacle counts as two conductors as well. And then they also include fixture studs and hickeys. Those each count for one conductor on their own as well towards box fill. The next thing we're going to take a look at as far as 12-3034 is what conductors actually count towards box fill. So the first ones that we're going to take a look at are conductors that are pulled straight through the box, as in this example here. So you can see the three conductors pull straight through. They don't go anywhere else. They don't exit the box anywhere else. Each one of these conductors counts as one conductor as far as box fill is considered. So when we look at these as a total, we should see three straight through conductors. That counts for three wires towards box fill. So if we were to size this four square, this, well, I guess we're not even going to call it a four square yet, we're just going to call it a square box, we're going to take that number to table 23. And table 23 specifically, we're going to look in the square box column because that's what we want to find in this case. Okay, so based off that, we know we have three number six augs at table 23 tells me that we are gonna go with a four by one and a half inch square box. That is the minimum size that would be required for this installation. Could we go bigger? Absolutely, but again, this is de to determine the minimum size box required. Okay, for our second example over here, if we take a look, we have something similar, except now in this case, what's actually happening is these conductors are entering the box, they're doing a splice or a termination, and they're exiting the box. And code is very clear in stating that any conductor that enters or exits counts as one conductor. So if we think about that, we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six conductors. So six conductors enter, and I'm just going to say slash exit. Okay, so that counts as six conductors towards box fill. But what we also have in here, we discussed it in a previous slide, we have these three morets. And remember, morets are only counted as pairs. So we have one pair of wire nuts equals one wire. So we're just going to write that up here. One conductor 
and I'm going to say four wire nuts. If we think about that, we have a total of seven conductors that count towards our box fill. And again, we're going to take that number, we're going to go to table 23, and again, we have this square box, so we're going to look in the square box column. Table 23 tells me that if I have seven number sixes, I'm actually going to go with a 4, 11, and 16 by 2 and an eighth. That would be the size, again, the minimum size junction box required to accommodate those total of six conductors plus those morettes that are in that box as well. If we look at the next example here, the next example on the left, it's similar to the last one, so we know that based off of what we did. We're not going to use this one for calculation, just for demonstration purposes. We know that we had the equivalent of seven conductors for sure before we added these little pigtails off here. Now, those little pigtails, those are conductors that don't technically enter or exit the box. They would terminate on a device or something like that. But again, code is very specific. We do not count conductors that neither enter or exit. So we still would only count seven conductors as far as this is concerned for box fill. If we look at the example over here on the right, the only thing we're looking at now, the only thing in this box is just this bonding conductor. Okay, and again, that bonding conductor neither exits nor enters. So in this one, we would actually have zero conductors for box fill. And again, this is just an example, not a practical application of how we would use these boxes, but it's just to get an idea of what actually counts as far as box fill. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples here. So this one here, we have multiple things going on. We're going to take a look at the example on the left first. So it tells us all conductors are number eight gauge. What size square box is going to be required? So again, we'll apply what we've discussed in the previous slides. We know for sure right off the bat that we have three morettes or three wire nuts equals one pair, which equals one conductor. So we know that we have one conductor, and we're just going to put in brackets wire nuts. We know that we also have one, two, three, four, five, six conductors. And I'm just going to put enter slash exit. Okay, so, and again, any conductor that enters or exits and terminates counts as one conductor towards box fill. The other thing we have is we have these one, to three conductors that pull straight through. So three conductors straight through. We've accounted for everything in this box. We can total it up. We have 10 conductors total. And again, it tells me that we have number eight gauge conductors. So when we go to table 23, again, we have a square box. We have an option here of either four by two and one eighth or four and 11 sixteenths by one and a half inch. Either or, if you look at table 23, it actually gives you the option for both. Personally, if I'm going for cost, I'm probably going to go with the 4 by 4 box over a 4 11 16 Hey, in the next example over here, we've got quite a bit of stuff going on. So it's good to identify everything that's going on. Okay, so right off the bat, we can take a look and say, well, we have this pair of wire nuts. We know that's going to be one conductor. It's going to be the equivalent of one conductor. We have one switch. We know that's going to be the equivalent of two conductors. We have one receptacle. That's going to be the equivalent of two conductors. Now we actually need to take a look at the individual conductors and determine what they're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight these so that we can follow them and determine whether they enter and exit or whether they just terminate to a device in the box and never actually leave. So we'll start with the ones that are coming out of our conduits. We know that these are definitely going to count because they exit the box. So we have two that come from that conduit on the bottom. We have two that come from 
the conduit on the top. Now we need to take a look at what's actually going on with the rest of the conductors that are located in those splices. So the last conductor in our black here comes down and goes to that switch. It doesn't go anywhere else, so we're not going to count that one. Just like the one from our identified splice here that comes down and makes its way over and goes to the receptacle, again, it doesn't actually go anywhere except to that receptacle from that splice, so as code says, we're not going to count that one towards box fill. And our last conductor is the one that comes from the other side of our receptacle and goes up into our unidentified splice. So based off of that, what we've said is that according to this, we have one, two, three, four conductors that actually count towards conduit fill. The rest do not get counted because again, they don't actually leave the box. They just go and terminate on a device um, from those splices. So if we think about that, let's go through and tally these up. We have four conductors. And I'm going to put in brackets that enter slash exit. Those are the ones from our conduits. We have two conductors for our switch. We have two conductors from our receptacle. And we have one conductor for that pair of wire nuts. Again, total it up. And we should see nine conductors total. And based off that, we know that they're number 12. So table 23, again, it is a square box. Table 23 tells me that for nine number 12 gauge conductors, we are going to select ourselves a four by one and a half inch minimum junction box for that. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, all these conductors have all been the same size so far. What happens though if we have different size conductors in the same box? Well, let's take a look at the next example that I have laid out here. We have an octagon box with some conduits coming in from either side and the bottom. We have a conductor coming in from each location and they do a tap under this marette. All right, so we have two different size conductors in this box. So this is how we're going to lay this out. It tells me that I am going to, again, count up all the conductors that I do have, but count first. We have one pair of wire nuts equals one conductor. And each one of these conductors enters or exits. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six conductors. But if we look at the note over here on the right, it tells me that the larger conductors are number eight. So this is going to be a number eight and my smaller conductors are going to be number 12 conductors. So now we're going to do this a little bit differently. We actually have to use table 22 in this example to, to determine what is the actual volume that each one of those conductors or their equivalent will take up. So 22, table 22 actually gives us a milliliter volume per conductor. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say that we have, for example, if we look at how many number eights we have, we have two number eight conductors that enter the box and terminate under that wire nut. Then from that wire nut, we have four number 12 conductors. So we're not quite done yet because remember we have that single pair of wire nuts that has to count somewhere because the largest conductor underneath that termination is a number eight it's going to count that pair of morettes is going to count as an additional number eight so we're going to scratch this two out and say we actually have three number eight conductors now when we go to table 22 all we have to do is simply look up what is the milliliter volume of each one of those conductors so for example Number eights have a volume of 45.1 milliliters, while number 12s have a volume of 28.7 milliliters. So all we have to do now is take that 45.1, multiply it by the three equivalent conductors that we have, and that should give us 135.3 
milliliters is the amount of space that the number eight equivalents take up. And if we take our 28.7 times the four number 12s, that should give us a total volume of 114.8 milliliters. Again, we're going to total it up. Now we're going to say, what is the total conductor volume? And the total conductor volume, just add those two together, should be 250.1 milliliters. That is the total amount of space that those conductors are taking up inside that box. Now, when we go to table 23 to size this, remember, we're going to use the octagon because that's what our box given is here. So at table 23, I need a box that has at least 250.1 milliliters. So looking at the capacity column in the center, it actually tells me that if I'm looking for one that's at least 250.1, what I end up with is a four by two and one half inch octagon box. That's what is required for this particular installation. Hopefully this video has helped you when determining box sizes in accordance with 123034 using tables 22 and 23. Definitely feel free to turn that little notification bell red so you can find out when new videos are uploaded. If you want to check out those videos mentioned on sizing pull boxes with larger conductors, check out the playlist that I've got on the screen here. And don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.